What's going on guys, your market update for Friday, January 13th, 2023. Can you believe we're already two weeks into 2023? Let's check out the market, see what's going on here. Again, we use trading economics uh, really to kind of get a one-stop shop of what's going on here. Again, there's tons of news here in the site. As always, we want to provide framework for what's going on and give you guys the tools to go do your own thing. And there's a lot of people I love watching and, you know, they just kind of sit there and talk the whole time. And they, and they, one of the things I'm always thinking is like, what are you using? What are you watching every day? What are you looking at? Uh, what are your metrics? What are your frameworks? And, you know, some people like to keep their own stuff pri proprietary because they try to pay for stuff or whatever it is. And they like kind of keep the info to themselves. But at the end of the day, all the info is out there for you to look at. So, you know, we want to provide you guys signal and, and to actually have the tools so you can go check things on your own and, and go do your own due diligence, go do your own homework. So uh, at the end of the day, that's what this is all about. It's about expanding our, our knowledge, our, our, our base, and, and figuring out what it is that uh, we can do to further ourselves and further the people around us and build community at the end of the day. So, because th this community that we're, we have here is, is the most important thing. In any survival situation, community is the most important thing. And you know, if you haven't noticed, uh, you know, life is trying to kill you every day. We're, we're all going to the same end goal at the end of the day. So life is about survival. You know, this is not some prepping thing, you know, whatever. You know, people get all like weird about like, oh, the preppers and this and that and preparing. It's like, yeah, that's called being a good human being, called being a good citizen, preparing every single day like it's your last and, and you not being there for your family. You know, we have to prepare for these things. This is how life works. We all are going to the same spot. Life is trying to take us out every single day and it's up to us to survive. That's what life does. It's a life of entropy and we have to, uh, you know, work out. You know, I worked out this morning, you know, eat right, you know, make, take care of our bodies, doing the things that are, are, are good for us so we can survive and combat the, the forces in the world, whether it's mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, that's what we're here designed to do. So. I'll get off my pedestal, but let's jump in here. This is, I just want to give context for why we do what we do at the end of the day. So let's check out the bond market. The, the, the dog that wags the tail here is the bond market. So let's check out the United States. What's happening here? Here's the whole curve. Uh, and you can see, you know, how, how crazy the curve is and how inverted it is. You have the fours up here at the low end, and we have all the threes down at, at the long end of the curve. So you can see the curve is very inverted, meaning there's recession, meaning there's, there's hard times ahead. And the bond market saying, hey, we think that there's going to be lower bond yields in the future because the government or the Federal Reserve is going to have to come in and start buying bonds and easing the market, getting currency into the market, meaning when, once they buy bonds, the prices go up because they're buying them. They're getting into the market, driving price up, meaning the yield comes down. So that's really what that means at the end of the day. And we see the 10 year again is dropping a little bit. We see someone's in your buying, you know, people are in your buying, whether it's, you know, the tax loss harvesting going on, but again, retail doesn't move it too much. You probably have some people in here buying, obviously saying, oh, there's some great yields. I'm going to sit here and again, inflation though. Remember if you think a three and a half or 4% yield is good, remember inflation, true inflation is 10 to 20%. We see eggs, the cost of energy, you know, housing going through the roof. Don't pay attention to, to the CPI. Uh, again, that's a, that's a lagging, indicator here so we're going to show you again we, we talk about this a lot but sh like shadow stats is so important we, we we talk about this a lot um in the uh, you know just in, in daily videos we do in, in daily blogs and stuff like that so john williams shadow stats is incredible all you gotta do is click this alternate data tab and it goes give you a bunch of tabs about inflation unemployment and where things are really at which is it's nice obviously a dollar so if you come in here you can see that the shadow stats, 1980 based, before they really started messing with the CPI, we're, we're really up here about 14. So it's dropped a little bit. It just He just updated, I think it was about 15 or so, uh, 15, 16 in the last uh, week or so, but he just updated and it's dropped just below 15%. So the real inflation from the 1980 based version is still around 15%, you know, just below. So that, that's what we're dealing with, and, and that which makes a lot more sense, right? That's why the uh, price of eggs have doubled, tripled, quadrupled in many places, and, and life has gotten much more expensive for people. It's because we're dealing with the, the true inflation. You know, again, Ayn Rand talks about, you know, we can ignore reality, but we can't ignore the consequences of reality. And that's kind of the cultural war that's going on right now. We just have a whole s section, subset of people in this world that think we can just go on and do whatever we want to do with no re repercussions, no consequences, anything. We can just print 
unlimited currency and and we're gonna be a prosperous nation by getting us ourselves further and further into debt right we can go into all kinds of social issues and we can we think we can just keep going against nature's law and pretending changing definitions in, in dictionaries and that's just going to be life postmodernism or my opinion is fact my opinion my emotion is what is fact unfortunately that's not how life works you know, you can you can confuse things for a while, for a month, for a year, for ten years, even for you know maybe a couple of decades. But eventually, just like this fiat experiment of removing gold from the money, removing reality and true value, the actual money from the dollar, from the currency, from the paper note, from the IOU, we've now removed that and decoupled that. So it's lasted fifty plus years, and and we can go for a while like in this artificial area. But eventually, the chickens come home and roost, and they're starting to come home and roost now. In 08, they really started coming, and now they're they're coming and coming faster and faster the nails in the coffin of the US dollar, as Mike Maloney would say. So, you know, we're gonna pay those consequences, we're gonna pay those prices, but my hope for us here is building a community, talking about the, the, the job we have to prepare ourselves, whether it's buying Bitcoin, gold, silver, food, energy, water, uh, land, security, firearms, ammo, and building this community. This is, if we do those things, if we make even a five, 10, 50% uh, movement in those, even little movements in all those vectors, and again, it's a lot of things can be done very easily. You know, we're going to buy gold and silver, you know, um, ammo, all these things, food, food storage. A lot of these things can be done with the click of a button. I mean, by the end of the day, you could have a lot of these things. You're 5% down the road. You're 10% down the road in all these vectors. Every little bit helps. And every little bit is going to make us more independent, more resilient, less in need of the government and in the overlords giving us, you know, their rule, their mandates, their laws. When you are not beholden to people and you can say, nah, -uh, I can live on my own. I can do whatever I want. You don't tell me what to do, employer. You don't tell me what to do, government. That's called freedom. That is where true freedom lies. And that's why we had that for, you know, 100, 200 years in America because we had people that were, were self-sufficient. They could live on the land. They could do whatever it was. And they could, they could tell the government, like, get out of here. I don't need you. You know, again, nowadays we're so tech heavy, uh, so urbanized that we have people that are so reliant on the system. And if we can start, you know, re rebelling against that, re repealing kind of that, that way of living a little bit, it doesn't mean you have to give it up completely, but if we can start getting back even five, 10%, like I said, down each of these vectors, that will make massive strides towards the, the government being less a part of our lives and having more of your wealth, having more of your time. Because that's what this is all about at the end of the day, true freedom is being able to do what you want to do when you want to do it. That's what it is. That's what money buys people. Uh, and then we talk about money all the time being your time and energy stored up in a container, right? That's all money is. And it's your ability to tell people, your employer, tell the government, whoever it is, don't need you, don't care. You, you can make me, you can try to make me do whatever you want, won't do it. And that's freedom. That's true freedom. The healthcare you want, the food you want to eat, the trips you want to take, the time you want to spend with your family, the schools they go to, uh, where you work and when you work, that's true freedom. That's what this is all about at the end of the day. And it's understanding these things that help us get there. So again, the tenure is down a little bit. We have you know, some central banks, there's people in here buying stuff and you know, we'll see. That's, I, I'm sure the DXY is down a little bit. We have, we have the bonds being uh, you know, bought up here. So the yields are, are going down, the price of the, of the bonds going up, the value and the yields going down. So let's see, what are, what are stocks doing? They're fairly flat, not nothing too crazy, up, you know, a little bit in the, in the Dow and the S&P 500 is a, a tiny bit down. So it's, you know, fairly flat, but again, you see the little movements in, in there. Uh, Forex, we'll see the DXY is doing. Of course, there we go. DXY is down a little bit. Again, 102 was 103, 104 a couple of days ago. When we were doing this, now it's down to 102. Really kind of in, in lockstep with the, let's see the DXY here. So you see this chart obviously going down really in the last, what is this, the last two months. You've just seen this really big, uh, well, yeah, last two, two plus months, two and a half months. You've seen this huge just decrease in, you know, that we got to the limit, you know, where it was like, you know what, whoa, 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 things are crashing around the world, UK pound sterling's crashing, Sri Lanka's collapsing, all these people around the world, Japan, Korea, they're all like, whoa, 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 you gotta stop this rates, and all of a sudden you've seen someone in here, someone, who's buying all these bonds? Because they've been driving this price down. So central banks, even though they say they're tightening, they're doing stuff, there's clearly someone in here, and many central banks probably, in here buying the debt, and, and driving this debt back down, and driving the relative strength of the dollar down. And again, at the end of the day, remember, this is the relative strength of the dollar compared to like, what, six other dollar, uh, six other currencies, uh, foreign currencies, which all of them are backed by nothing. So remember, this is just the dollar backed or, uh, comparatively to other currencies, that's it. 
This is still doesn't mean like the dollar is necessarily good long term. Uh, being in the dollar long term, we know it's going to be devalued. We know they're going to keep printing. We know they're going to keep down this route and, and it's going to be aided through, like we were just saying, it's going to be aided through the bond purchases, right? So we just talked about the bond purchases. And that's going to be, as soon as we get into a next crisis, whether it's this year or this decade, which will absolutely happen in this monetary transition, you're going to have the central banks come in in overdrive. And, and I've heard estimates of five to 10 trillion right away. Boom, all of a sudden we had what, two trillion and you know, another two trillion package in 2020. And we had $800 billion packages back, you know, 10 years ago. It's gonna be, you know, hyperdrive, 10X that. So this is where you have to be prepared for that going forward. Um, let's check out crude oil. Uh, up a little bit. So we, we see crude oil has been kind of, this past week, it's been up uh, almost towards the, the 80 handle. So again, interesting to see, again, when oil prices are rising, again, it, it, the costs go up everywhere in the world. Um, you know, the, the big players love when oil goes up, and but it does increase costs, right? Trucking, uh, the fuel, everything, everything goes up. You know, we're at that 100, 120, things like that. If it keeps going up, you see everything around the world continue to increase in price. And uh, gold, again, up. Way, you know, way up really, 1%. These fairly big moves in gold, silver up again at 1.5%, up above $24. And gold, I don't even know the last time gold has been up above 19. Let's see, wow. Uh, yeah, since May was the last time it was up at 19, uh, this level. So we can see these real moves in uh, when the dollar is selling off and losing uh, purchasing power of value, I guess. And then the 10 year yield again is going down and the bonds are being bought up. You generally see this correlation a lot. You see, again, we have, there's another one I want to see here, and it was uh, Bitcoin. So we'll see Bitcoin again. We're at 19.3. So when's the last time it was above 19? Again, two months ago, two and a half months ago. So you're seeing the liquidity in the system. Central banks are in here buying. Let's go back to that quick. So central banks are in here buying. Check this out again over the last couple of months. So yeah, last two, month, two and a half months, we've been seeing this. Someone's in here really buying this and, and driving this, these yields down. And subsequently, we have gold up, we have Bitcoin up and absorbing that liquidity and, and sniffing that out of the system. So these are all things, I, I don't have any other uh, big, there's you know, no financial news of the day necessarily. CPI came out this week, obviously, you know, lower than they, you know, thought it was gonna be or what they were kind of expected. So the market's again, kind of taking off thinking like, oh, this is great. Like we kind of got a handle on this, it's going down. But be prepared, there is gonna be more and more inflation system. Again, when you see the DXY down and you see the 10 year yield down like this, the yield, again, that where, what do we think is gonna happen? There, that's it's just more inflation, you're gonna have more inflation. And again, if we really wanted to get a handle on this, instead of trying to crush the economy, the demand destruction, which all it is is just forcing people to lose their jobs, which is happening all over the place. And again, we could share articles of everyone, Rocket Mortgage, uh, you know, all these Amazon, all these people laying people off. I just saw an article of Goldman Sachs laying off like 3,500 people. Just clown world. If, if Goldman Sachs is losing people and laying people off, then you know things are coming down the pike. So these companies know something and because they're in bed with the government as well, and they, they know something. And it's, it's what does the average guy need to know? Well, it's things like this. We need to know what the dog is doing so that the, the tail, when that happens, when it, when it wags its tail, what's going to happen? And it's just, it's batting down the hatch time. It's, it's get some cash. We talk about our monthly newsletter, our portfolio allocation letter, where we go through. So I just did this a couple days ago. So go, go back and check it out. And, you know, I don't know, five or 10 videos back. It's from the last week here where we go through the portfolio allocation and, to, and I show you what asset classes I'm in and position ourselves appropriately for what is coming ahead over the next 12 to 24 months. It's going to be, it's going to be a wild ride. It looks like so buckle up, prepare, and we can become uh, much, much better, much stronger on the backside of this. Again, as Bob Proctor, Jim Rohn, all the greatest personal development teachers out there t talk about is when in great crisis is great opportunity. That's when all of the greatest people build is in bear markets in down times and get wealthier and wealthier and, and create more freedom for themselves. So I uh, appreciate you listening in here, your time and energy is the most important asset we have. Please uh, share this video if you got something out of it, if you like it, if you don't, and you want us to add something in here, please let us know in the comments what you'd like to see here when we kind of do our, our market uh, just wrap and kind of see what's going on. So appreciate you, look forward to seeing you on the next one.